Nani? Koi! Nani? This is Press Peterson, the voice of NBC Radio, reporting to you live from the courthouse in Beauville, Mississippi. The atmosphere is intense as Wilfred Smith, a colored man, is on trial for his life. Smith attacked a young white woman, one Aura Lee Dupree. The weather is sweltering on this July 15th in the year of our Lord, 1926, here in Beauville. And as I gaze out over this courtroom, I can see that even some of the coloreds are sweating. <laughs> this trial that has dragged on into its third exhausting week should come to an end today. Meanwhile, down here in Mississippi, we like to see... Garvey, one mean white man. Yeah. You know what? He caught his brother with a colored girl one time and threatened to prosecute his own brother. Oh. Seven, two days later, his brother come up dead. <laughs> what are you going to wear? For what? For the hanging. Oh, well, that depends on whether they've taken pictures like the last time. I always wear pink when there's photographs. Well, somebody's lying. If he'd really attacked her, she'd have committed suicide. Anybody touch my daughter ain't gonna have to have no jury. I seen your daughter, and you ain't got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Shut up! This trial has developed into a battle of legal giants, the defense by John Brownstein, and for the prosecution, Mississippi's own Big Ed Garvey. Big Ed is entering the courtroom now. Sorry I'm late, Your Honor, but my wife has the gout and the kid was sticking pins in her feet. Big Ed Garvey, one of the meanest white prosecutors the South has ever seen. But I see the judge is about to begin his final summation, and the fate of this young colored, a strapping field hand, hangs in the balance. And before we move on to the summation, does the defendant have anything to say? 
taking the Fifth Amendment, huh, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Smart move. Well, the we defense attorney get on with his summation. We don't have an eternity to wait. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the antebellum South, it is indeed a sorry day for the white race and the colored species as well. <laughs> when a man of my stature must come all the way down from the civilized North just to defend this Negro. Negro, what a wonderful word. <laughs> Derived from the Latin negrorum, meaning to tote. <laughs> now, say it with me. Negro. Mm. Well. How soon we forget what the Negro has done for you? Who picked your cotton? Who tied their hair up in neat little bandanas and sang softly as they wet nursed your little miserable children? Who taught you the meaning of doodah? <laughs> See how soon we forget. But I'm not going to let you forget. We paraded witness after witness before you, attesting to the fine character of this young man. This young man who gave his weekly check to his mother. Now, can you honestly believe that this young man would attack a hunk of steaming white trash like this? No. no, 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 no. You're right. The answer is no. no I'm. I'm not going to beg. <laughs> and I'm not going to plead. <laughs> I have one last piece of evidence for you. I want to bring to you right now. Because on the night of the alleged attack. My client was in jail. And you can't be in two places at once. Uh, now, members of the jury, I want you to look inside your rational minds right now. And I know for some of you, that's going to be an impossible task. But I want you to look inside there and bring back a verdict of not guilty. If not, you have proved to me that Darwin was wrong. And I say to you, if you can't find this man not guilty, then let him hang. No. Let him hang. <laughs> now you I now call on the great Ed Garvey for the prosecution's summation. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Oh, no! Oh, no, please! Please, don't hang my son! Please, I don't care let my son hang! He's a good boy! I swear it! Please! And, Dicey, that ain't your son. <laughs> that ain't your son. Oh, ain't your son. <laughs> I believe it's the heat that gets to him, you know, which is it's sweltering in here. Must be 115 in the shade and not a piece of shade anyway. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, a lot has been said about this case, but I want to talk to the shop. Now, shop, they said that this young man was not at the place where the rape took place, but that, how you doing? That's good, Mr. Brown. They say that he was was in your jail. Is that true? Yeah. Well, he'd been booked and incarcerated. But the attack was at night. You know how slippery they are. <laughs> slippery is the key word, Your Honor. <laughs> Slip or read. <laughs> I found a book about Houdini in his cell. It's obvious he learned a little trickery from reading that book and let himself out of jail and perform the rip and then let itself back in. Slip or reap. <laughs> I have a sworn statement here concerning the defendant, Your Honor. This is a statement from J.T. Tubbs. 
which says on the night of June 15th, he saw the defendant in Corsets Wells Field laying on an ant hill nude. <laughs> and the ants was taking little bites out of him and everything. He went over to help him and he said, no, thank you, I'm having a good time, just pour honey on me. <laughs> Unspeakable. Unspeakable. Detestable, if you get my meaning, because we're running short of honey. <laughs> that explains the honey shortage. <clears throat> and if that ain't enough, when you hear out of the mouth of this dear, sweet angel of mercy, this wonderful fly <laughs> in the fly, this innocent macaw running in life, when you get... Excuse me. Would you tell the court in your own words, what happened to you on the night of the 23rd? And if this don't break your heart, your honor, <laughs> nothing on God's earth will. Go ahead. It was a beautiful evening. <laughs> the moon was full. The frogs was croaking on the lake. The frogs were croaking on the lake. The jazz man was in full bloom. <laughs> you couldn't have picked a more perfect night for a quiet walk. Quiet walk. There it was. <laughs> I was out on the road, all alone. Just me and Toto. We had just eaten porridge at the Three Bears' house. And we was walking down the road when this here rabbit and a Cheshire cat jumped out of a tree, and then Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall. Your Honor, a rabbit, Cheshire cat, Humpty Dumpty. Your Honor, this man is obviously a master of disguise. <laughs> Your Honor, the only thing that's obvious is that this woman is ridiculous. You see there, Your Honor? A man, a stranger from the North, comes and calls our bell of the South ridiculous. Now I beg you to bring in a verdict of guilty. There's no other verdict but guilty, guilty, guilty. That's five guilty. I can't stand it anymore. I can't let an innocent man go to the gallows. I'm the man who did it. I was with her on the night of August 23rd. It was me. Well, now I was with her too. Long about 10 to 9. Me too. What in the hell was you doing with her? Your Honor, it's obviously a case of mass hypnosis. <laughs> Why, the mere thought of him wanting this woman is transferred to the whole community like a virus. Why, the next thing you know, I'll be saying I was with her along about 11, 11.30. <laughs> Why, if this is allowed to continue and this Negro is free, why, nothing will stop the pace of time. Why, the next thing you know, they'll be wanting appeals. That's right, fair trial and whatnot. That's right, then they'll be wanting to vote. No! Oh. And if that ain't enough, someday, they'll be wanting to play baseball. Oh. Great. Great. Now, will the jury set about its deliberations? Your Honor? We done reached a verdict. Your Honor, that's ridiculous. They haven't even voted yet. No need to. It's unanimous. We find the defendant not guilty. <laughs> however, however, Your Honor, we find this carpet-bagging communist pinko Jew boy lawyer guilty of getting him off. <laughs> This lawyer. Oh, please, I'm sorry, but it's an NBC ruling that we can't have pets in our rooms. Pets? And I've heard that you've have a, you have a pet in this pets, room. Pets? Pets? I'm afraid of fur. And I eat birds. You eat birds? I eat birds up. <laughs> you got a bird? 
I eat your bird. You got a bird? Mr. Mr. Pryor, that sounds like you have a finch in there. A what? A finch. Is that a, a whooping crane you have in there? Mr. What? Pryor? A chicken? A chicken? Yeah, I eat Why chickens. Do you have I a... like them fresh for my lunch. Well, I think you better have your I lunch. I eat them. I learned that in Haiti. I think you better have your lunch now, Mr. Pryor, because yeah. we're not allowed to have pets in our rooms. Well, what should I do with the feathers? Stuff them in a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> You understand what you're doing to me? Stop with the bird impressions, man! You're in big trouble! I gotta talk to you! You are making me nervous, you know that? I'm making... You're making me nervous! You're always late! You never do anything! You're always walking up and down do and you pacing! you understand what... What? You're pacing all the time, back and forth! Pacing? It makes me nervous. Let me tell you one thing, man. If the Muslims ever find out I got a white head in my dressing room, I'm in big trouble! Only a nigga would keep up her head. Would you do me a favor, please? What? Give me a glass of water. Give you a glass of water. You want water? You want food? You want me to shh? Water. Here's some water. I try to relate to you. I try to be friendly to you. What's Come on! on. Water. Just lift it up. I'm thirsty, man. Here, water. Here. <laughs> so sloppy. Why don't you stop yelling? You know, not everything. And you know another thing. I gotta tell you this right now. Your memory is getting really bad. Don't put your fist up to me. What was last Tuesday? Do you remember? Last Tuesday. Last was Tuesday. Think after on. Monday. Uh, you know, it's really getting on my nerves. I'll tell you, if you will be kind enough to remember, we were supposed to go to Disneyland together. You think I'm gonna take you to Disneyland? <laughs> huh? And you're gonna bounce around in Disneyland like you did at the dinners? I know what you're saying. You know what you're trying to do? What? You're trying to get rid of me, aren't you? Get rid of you? You want to get rid of me? If no! I wanted to get rid of you. No! Shut up! <laughs> I can break your nose. I seen Foreman fight. You're always complaining about everything. You know what I'm complaining about? You tell me. Go ahead. When I get home with a woman, you know, I've been in show business now and I'm a big star and they take me home with them. <laughs> Every time I get to the moment of excitement, you holler out, Pepsi! Uh, they say, who's that white boy talking about Pepsi? You know, I really am getting tired of your mood music, which you play constantly. I I'm just not into Barry White, you know? Barry White, get down! Barry White says the mood. Hey, baby, baby, I want to get down. <laughs> you know, I'm quite capable of playing music myself, but you never even let me have my harmonica. I bought you a harmonica. You can't play the harmonica! It's in the Where's drawer. Where's the harmonica? Wait, wait. The top drawer. Top. Harmonica. Hey, hey, yeah! Boy, play it, you punk! Play the harmonica! Dick, we'll use it on the next show. I'll get you a great set, huh? special lighting, some special material. You'll love it. Huh? We'll what do it I next did... week. You'll love it. Is it the Google guy? I see Bowman. See? Put my cage! I can't stand it. Put Don't my you... cage back! Don't you fly Please. away! Please! Oh. <laughs> Don't ever take my cage off again. Please. Please. If you don't teach me how to play harmonica, I'm gonna take you bowling.
good. Oh, oh, thank you, Mama. Yes, yeah. I'm telling you. Now, don't stop because I'm here. Just keep right on saying okay. it. <laughs> you. Hey. Now, how am right. I supposed to enjoy my food with all this noise? Three hound dogs on the corner hollering. I ain't coming back here no more to eat again. I heard that. Yeah. And you better not bring your black tail back here to eat again. I you don't want me? none of your free food. You I don't need your you free are food. I'll go down the children. street and eat some good body food. I don't but need your these children here you're talking about. You Mommy, eat. Now, you, you better right. not put your that's foot back here again. Now, I hope you hear that. Don't need that's that's right. right. Now, come on, boys. Come on, let, let's forget uh, all about uh, him. Now, all I want you to do is just concentrate, just concentrate on your singing and keep practicing. Because ain't no black group in America that ever got any place that didn't do just exactly what you were doing, singing on the streets. And I know what I'm talking about because I've been here for many a year and I've seen them come and I've seen them go. I know talent. I know good talent when I hear it. And you boys got it. I mean, you boys got it. You can sing. I can see you. I can see you right up there on that stage and singing and singing them songs with them bright lights shining right on you. So come on, let Mama Ely hear it. All right. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four. Work on me. I work on me. Work me over.
start the second half of the Richard Pryor Show. Professor! I got it open! Good heavens, man! Great Scott, we've discovered the fountain of all knowledge of Egypt and the entire world, you... Do you realize the importance of this moment, Smedley? Yes, sir, I do. Do you <laughs> see the brilliance, the, the untold years? I see it, sir. <laughs> oh, sorry. Great, sir. This is medicine, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. That father. Thank you, sir. What is this? See. Si. Says. Can I? This is the elixir of life, sir. The elixir of life? The cure for all diseases. Wait. See here. Wait, Give it there's to me. an inscription on the bottom. Give it to me. Give it to me. Open at other end. You <laughs> lomax. <laughs> This can't be, man. What? You know what this is? What is it, Buddha? It's the book of life. <laughs> book of life? In the beginning, when man arrived on Earth, the black gods did leave their spacecraft, and they walked, and they named the beast of the sea and the animals of the land. Heavens. And man, in his blackness, did walk the Earth, making a... <laughs> Medicine? Medicine? They discovered type. These were all black people got down. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now? This ain't, there ain't nothing in here about whitey. This is ours, Jack. Wait till the brothers hear this. Puna. I'm going to get this book out of here, baby. This tells me real tea. Puna, and this off. self control yourself, don't you see? What you mean, Jack? Look at this here. Black people discovered the, started the music and the brain surgery back in the year. Three B.C. Yes, of course, of course, brother. Man, they was getting down. This is it, brother. Yes, Everybody gonna know about this. This book, we can change the history. Civilization will be changed. By all means. Yeah, this is gonna be it. Get the bulldozers. There's nothing here. But, 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 but. Shut up. Good heavens, time for tea, eh? What? <laughs> Yeah. 
This way. The come from man will be out in a moment. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to Georgie. I am the come from man. I tell you where you come from, and for this you pay me a whole bunch of money. <laughs> okay? In some cases, I tell you where you're going. You're going to the bank to get my money. <laughs> I like to make little knickknacks, you know. It's very good to see you people here. What we have on the agenda first? Mr. Williams would like to know where he come from. Mr. Williams, yeah. how do you do? Welcome, welcome. I say you where you come from. I have here in files. We've been checking. We did a lot of research for you. Here, look. Uh, you come from Cleveland. Oh, man, I don't know that. Well, if you know that, what you doing here? <laughs> That's stupid to pay $2,000 and you know you come from Cleveland. <laughs> Well, excuse me, Mr. Come From Man, but could you tell us about that shield there? Ah, the shield. Ah, this shield is a Ruzi shield. Oh. Oh. Ruzi oh. tribe used to live in the plain lands, and then when it get hot, they go up into the mountain where the snow, where the water, and they call Kilimanjaro people. And they go up there and they have what they call air turtles. The air oh. turtle is a large bird. It fly around and it look like a turtle. <laughs> And they're so big that they can't fly but one time and they die. <laughs> and they take the shell and they turn the shell over upside down and they wait for the Mabutu. Then the Mabutu is an ant, an ant about five inches long and they're very dangerous. They eat everything, rocks, everything. They're very dangerous. And the tribe people paint their little feet with paint and let them run over the shell like that and they make beautiful designs, see? And this is very nice. $400. Uh, uh, doesn't that tag say made in Taiwan? Oh, the tag. Yes, the tag was made in Taiwan. <laughs> but the shield was made by the tribesman of Kilimanjaro. Excuse me, is, is that a Gucci shrunken head? I beg your pardon? Gucci shrunken head. Gucci? Yes. Gucci, I'm not familiar with this tribe. <laughs> oh, you mean Gochi? <laughs> yeah, the Gochi tribe. This is the Gochi tribe shrunken head. Oh. It is the smallest shrunken head in the world. The strength that the king is very wicked, and he shrank his head and wear him around his neck. One time he freak out, shrank everybody in the village head. <laughs> That's right, they wake up the next morning, they have little tiny head and big body like this head. <laughs> Freak them out like crazy. <laughs> and they run really far up into the bush country where the Wagugi live. And the Wagugi, they make heads big. Look at this head here. <laughs> this is called a big head. <laughs> and they blow these heads up like this and they make the people very unhappy because they fall on their face. <laughs> $200, you could have this. You can take this home, it's good for the kids to play back and forth like that, the ball thing. And if you take the cock out of it, it goes all around the room. <laughs> like a balloon, and it have odor that's good to kill rats. <laughs> so if you have rats, you could take that home with you. It's very nice. Excuse me, could you tell me about the African drum? The African, you know, you say African drum, there's many tribes in Africa. It's not African drum. You can't just say African, like I'm a Kukwaza, Shiba Wuzi. You got to say, what well, tribe? This drum come from Koyosha, and it, listen. See? Excuse me, please. She can't make it tonight. <laughs> So these are things that you must understand. This drum was made by 40 men make this drum. It's unbelievable, huh? You know why? It's made out of tiger skin. And you're not allowed to use weapons when you take the skin from the tiger. And thus it takes 40 men, because 39 die. <laughs> and the one that is left, he's very happy, and he beat the drum for 12 days. Then he go make love to everybody else's wife. <laughs> and that's how they have so much fun here. Excuse me. Uh, do you have hot dogs in Africa? Uh, hot, uh, hot what? Hot, hot dog. Hot dog. What the, is this a joke? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's a long pink thing made from pork. What? Pork? Poo poo. <laughs> pork poo poo. You eat pork and make your skin white. That's what, all you eat pork? It's bad for your, you eat a little pork too. <laughs> 
Okay. Bad for your complexion, you know. You don't eat pork, it make your brain crazy. <laughs> oink, oink, stinky, stinky. When you want to eat something, I tell you what you eat. You eat giraffe kawazi. What is kawazi, giraffe kawazi? It's a very long thing. It go in giraffe neck, make it stiff like that. And you boil it over the rocks of heat, and you brought it, and you put a little mustard on it, and you eat it, and it take two weeks to eat, but it's very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think all of Africa is very commercial. That's very smart. <laughs> you know, I'd like to tell you something. <laughs> we have many things here that we're trying to do. Sir, yes. sir, do you have many tribes in the area? Do we have many tribes in the area? What you think this is, a little place? <laughs> we have over 4,000 tribes here. We have to have two with us. I want to show you something. This is very nice. Two tribe of people. This is the pygmy, and this is the white tuse. No, 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 wait, I think I got it wrong. This is the pygmy, this is white tuse. Say after me. Pygmy, pygmy, what to say? What to say? Very good. I like the way you say this. I see you ladies, you look at the what so you like that, huh? <laughs> They're not for sale, though. <laughs> you can't take a moment to say. You know the what mother have carried the baby when they be pregnant, they carried the baby for 14 months. And they have labor for 92 days. <laughs> it take a long time to have a what to say. Pygmy have babies every three weeks. <laughs> That's what they come around. Many pygmies. Mr. Comfort Man, I'd like to find out about my grandfather. Your grandfather? What's your yeah. name? Harrison. Harrison. I didn't know about the... Oh, it was here? I don't know. Myself, I was in Zagita, Zamagwa. Kokobundi wangbuka ba hukia lukumbo kwa kikolese. Ah, here's a picture of your grandfather. We did many months of research, and here he is. But this is a white man. <laughs> Them's the brakes. <laughs> you pay your money, you take your chances. <laughs> now, you go out into the choir, you make with the bus loads, we go out to the bush country, you're gonna have you a good time, and you're gonna have a nice fun. I man who go come and say, what is it? A man who's a bus. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, he'd like for me to say to the ladies, when you take him out, please don't pinch him on the butt. Oh. Okay? Unless you pay him.
Let's hear it for Black Death! Short See you next week. Be cool. <laughs> Guest appearances by Jeff Corey, the Chuck Davis Dance Company, Charles Fleischer, Roger Jacobs, Eric Lonneville, Jimmy Martinez, Juanita Moore, Brian O'Dell, the OJs, and Robin Williams.